I'm Wes from Recommended Playing, and this guide is going to cover your equipment progression when using a charge blade through Master Rank in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. If you're playing through the base game, you should use the Defender Weapons and Black Belt Armor to get you through low and high rank and into Sunbreak's content. If you wish to forgo the catch-up mechanics for whatever reason, you should use the base game equipment progression videos on the channel. There will be links in the pinned comment and video description. You should consider starting Master Rank as wiping the slate clean. You'll want to do the standard practice of killing small monsters and carving them, as well as harvesting bugs, mining mining nodes, and harvesting bone piles for Master Rank materials. Monster Hunter is a pack rats game after all. Since you're in Master Rank, you should have access to the full suite of high rank decorations. This makes level 2 sockets on Master Rank gear particularly valuable, as you can socket in whatever skills that you see fit. Level 3 sockets can also fit level 2 decorations, so you can consider 3s as slightly more versatile 2s. For your buddy gear, it really does not matter. Anytime you forge some new weapons or armor for yourself, just use the scraps to outfit your Palamute and Palico buddies. Status weapons are usually my preference, but Poison especially feels pretty weak in Master Rank. Consider status, but just outfit your buddies with easy upgrades. Do not go out of your way for anything buddy related. Just go with the flow. As for talismans, I'll be sticking with a speed eating 2, fire resistance 1, 2 level 2 socket talisman. This is just a convenient way to get whatever skills you're interested in into your gear. If you wish to follow this guide pretty much exactly, you should use any talisman with 2 level 2 sockets. If you have a better talisman, or you have one that you really like, you should make a judgement call and use that instead. Realistically, your talisman doesn't matter too much. Of course, these are merely suggestions. Every Monster Hunter game has gotten progressively easier, and if you want to be a fashion hunter, be my guest. Sunbreak is pretty easy overall. Charge Blade standard core skills apply, which ends up being a lot of them. Charge Blade gets benefits out of Guard and Guard Up. Guard is best incorporated at level 3 and level 5. Levels 1, 2, and 4 don't feel overly impactful. If you wish to incorporate Guard, try for 3 and push for 5 if you'd like. Offensive Guard is expensive requiring level 3 sockets, but it's a solid choice for Charge Blade. You can incorporate Offensive Guard if you choose. As a Charge Blade user, you will get benefits out of Focus as well as Power Prolonger. Focus will make your charging attacks come out faster. Power Prolonger will keep your shield and sword powered up longer. These are both worth considering, but are skippable depending on your playstyle. There are various styles of Charge Blade. These are largely tied to your file type. This guide will primarily focus on impact file Charge Blades. At the end, there will be a final wrap up for Elemental style Charge Blade. This is just because Elemental is much more gear dependent than Impact Charge Blades. Use Impact for main story progression, then if you wish to switch to Elemental, you can swap to it at endgame. Charge Blade will get benefits from Rapid Morph. You'll want to incorporate it to greatly speed up the transforming attacks of the Charge Blade as well as deal more damage. Rapid Morph is kind of rare on gear, so you can socket it in easily using decorations. You'll want to incorporate Artillery to increase your file damage when using an Impact File Charge Blade, as well as Load Up for an extra file. Your file attacks cannot critically hit, so affinity based skills are lower priority on Charge Blade. Affinity is still strong, no doubt, as your non-file attacks can and will still critically hit. Artillery does not increase the file damage of elemental files. If you're using an elemental Charge Blade, skip Artillery. Sharpness management skills will also apply. You'll get serious benefits out of Handicraft, Razor Sharp, Protective Polish, and Master's Touch. You should also incorporate damage output skills like attack boost and affinity boosters like critical eye, maximum might, and weakness exploit where you can. Charge blade is basically the one weapon that you can use almost every single armor skill, so there's not really a wrong answer here. Now it's time to get started. Your first task to get into master rank will be to hunt a Daimyo Hermitar in the urgent quest Uninvited Guest. Daimyo Hermitar is weak to thunder, fire, and ice in that order. Equip yourself appropriately using your best high rank weapons and armor. You will want to try to break the Daimyo Hermitar's shell for a time-worn Crimson Horn. This also can be obtained by capturing. This isn't a huge deal if you don't get one, but it will give you a little bit of an upgrade immediately. Once you've beaten Daimyo Hermitar, you'll have to do a series of tutorial missions. Complete these and you'll get moved to Elgato, your new hub for Master Rank. 
Before we get into standard game progression, there's one more task to take note of. In Sunbreak, you'll get access to follower quests. These give you NPC helpers to assist you during your hunts. These have their own unique progression from the main story. If you ever need to hunt a monster multiple times for equipment, check the follower hunts to see if you can make progress there. Eventually, you will want to complete all of these as there are weapon and armor recipes unlocked from them. Most of these are pretty lackluster and skippable, but for completion's sake, you'll want to complete every quest eventually. Now on to the main story. Starting off in Master Rank 1 Star, you'll need to do two key quests from a list of four. Your best bet is to start with A Sinking Feeling. This is a simple quest to slay 15 Hermitar and Velocipray. You should try and kill and carve Velocipray as you need Tough Claws. You'll want to focus on mining ores and harvesting bone piles during this quest as well. This is all so you can forge the Kimura Warrior Charge Blade. This is your best option for a weapon for quite some time. Unfortunately, there just aren't any good impact charge blades early on in Master Rank. Generic weapons it is. Once you've equipped yourself with the Kimura Warrior Charge Blade, it's a good idea to hunt additional Daimyo Hermitar. The Hermitar chest, arms, and waist are a strong starting point for Master Rank armor. This will give you guard and lots of socket options for artillery and other core charge blade skills. Finally, to finish out the first set of key quests, hunt Royal Ludroth in You Had Me at Poofy. This is so you can forge the Ludroth Helm X and Ludroth Greaves X. These give some focus and power prolonger as well as having decent socket options. You should forge all these pieces, but they can be passed over for future offerings if you're willing to stick it out. After completing these key quests, you'll need to hunt a Tetranodon in Tetranodon Blockade. Quickly hunt this and move on to the next set of key quests. Your primary focus now should be Baroth in Baroth to a great start. This is to hunt Baroth, of course, but you should make sure to hunt and carve Renoplos around the area as well. The Renoplos chest and arms are strong options for artillery and have good sockets. You should definitely forge the Renoplos braces X. The chest is debatable. Now back to the main task at hand, Baroth. You can consider forging the entire Baroth set if you wish. Personally, I would forge the Baroth Helm and Greaves to replace the Royal Ludroth pieces. This ties well with the Hermitar and Renoplos pieces to make a reasonable starter set. Next up, the only other monster at this tier to consider is Volvodon. This is another opportunity for hunting and carving Renoplos in the Sandy Plains. Volvodon's offerings have some rapid morph, but the rest of the itemization is not overly interesting or powerful. You can hunt Volvodon for progress, but Rapid Morph is best gemmed in via decorations at the moment. After completing the two key quests, you'll get the urgent quest for Scarlet Tengu in the Shrine Ruins. This is to hunt Blood Orange Bishoten. Hunt B.O. Bishoten and move on to Master Rank 2 Star. <laughs> this guy must be a Smash player. This tier is very weak for Charge Blade, so you'll want to complete the key quest to move on as quickly as possible. You should start with Rathian, as it may have some potentially useful materials later on. Hunt Rathian in the Queen's Garden for quest progress and move on. The next monster on this list isn't overly important, but go ahead and hunt Pookie Pookie in Poison Drops in the Sand. This is once again for potential materials later. After completing those two key quests, you'll get the Urgent to hunt Anjanath in Provoking an Anjanath's Wrath. Hunt Anjanath and move on to the next set of key quests for Master Rank 2 Star. Finally, there's something decent. You should immediately start by hunting Toby Kadachi at this tier. Toby Kadachi has its own unique charge blade, but it's underpowered at the moment. You should instead use Toby Kadachi materials to upgrade the Kimura Warrior charge blade to the next tier. This requires ores, bones, and Toby Kadachi materials. Unfortunately, this upgrade does require a semi rare large wyvern gem, so hopefully, you acquired one during hunts from monsters like Baroth, Pookie Pookie, and Rathian. Once you've upgraded your Kimura Warrior charge blade, you'll need to make a choice. Unfortunately, your best bet for charge blade equipment is either Basarios for guard and artillery offerings, or Juratotis for offensive guard, power prolonger, and sockets. You can pick whichever you prefer here. You can hunt Basarios or Juratotis, or both. Alternatively, if you're willing to stick it out, you can take the easy way out and hunt a Rathian and Great Izuchi. Once you've cleared the two key quests, or maybe a little more, you can tackle the next Urgent. This is a rocky rampage to hunt Garangolm. Garangolm has a few offerings for Charge Blade. Yes, I'm as surprised as you are. 
You can consider the Golem Braces, the Golem Folds, and Golem Greaves. These offer focus and lots of socket options. The Golem Greaves aren't great, as Slugger and Stamina Thief are generally weaker skills, but they do have strong socket options, which makes them a little bit desirable. You will also get some benefit out of both Slugger and Stamina Thief. Forge these upgrades now if you wish, otherwise it's time to move on to Master Rank 3 Star. Starting off immediately, you'll want to hunt Shogun Sienatar in My Sienatar Gently Weeps. Shogun Sienatar has a nice alternative charge blade. This is very equivalent damage wise now, but it does get an upgrade soon, and the Kimura Charge Blade does not. You'll want to forge a Bone Slit Veil Plus using Master Rank Monster Bones, and then upgrade it to Shogun Sienatar's Guardian Blade. You'll downgrade the socket to level 3 from 4, but that's mostly a non issue. You'll also gain a lot of white sharpness, which is very nice as well as just a, just a smidge of water element. Once you've forged the Guardian Blade, you can consider the Shogun Sienatar set. This is a solid set for most Blade Master weapons, but as a Charge Blade user, you have better options at this tier. If you want, however, you can use the entire Shogun Sienatar set. Next, you should hunt Almudrin in Trial of the Almudrin. Almudrin is a few pieces worth considering for Charge Blade, but your best bet is to forge the Almudrin Helm X. This offers Rapid Morph and Strong Socket options making it very desirable. You should pick up the Almudrin Helmet X as soon as possible. Third and finally at this tier, you'll want to hunt Berioth in White Knight on Ice. Berioth has some strong offerings as a general purpose set, but you'll primarily look at the Berioth Male X. This provides maximum might, which as a Charge Blade user will be reasonably valuable. The Berioth Male X also has a lot of level 2 sockets, making it very customizable. Kitted out with some sweet new duds, you should take on Aurora Somnicanth in the Urgent Keep It Busy. This is simply to progress to the next set of key quests, but you might get some value out of it later. There is once again nothing that stands out of this tier. You can start with A Tale of Two Titans to hunt Garangolm and Somnicanth. This is a reasonable way to finish out pieces of the Golem set you may have missed out on earlier. It's also an easier quest. Next, the only monsters with some valuable stuff are Ragnikadaki and Magnamallow. These materials will probably be useful later down the line. Start with a sandy spider nest to hunt Rachnikadaki. Once you've cleared that quest, go ahead and hunt Magnamallow in the quest Purging Hatred. Once those key quests are cleared, you'll get the urgent for Lunagaron. Normally I'd recommend the Lunagaron helmet, but the Almudran helm is actually very strong for charge blades, so this is skippable. Hunt Lunagaron, and move on to Master Rank 4 Star. In Master Rank 4 Star, you're going to want to start with Pincers vs Pyro. This isn't because you actually need more Shogun Sienatar or Rathian parts, but because you want to upgrade your Guardian Blade. Well, you might need some more Shogun Sienatar parts for that one. The true gate of the Guardian Blade Plus is an Allfire Stone. This is acquired from mining in Master Rank Lava Caverns. Make sure to mine during this quest to acquire an Allfire Stone. Once you have the Allfire Stone, finish the quest and upgrade your Guardian Blade into a Guardian Blade Plus. That's your weapon covered, at least for a little bit. Next, you'll have a couple of options. Personally, Mizutsune has a reasonable charge blade option later. You'll also need a Conflagrant Sack for a future armor set, so Rathalos also isn't a bad choice. You should pick Rathalos or Mizutsune and hunt it in their appropriate quests. Now with the key quests cleared, you can hunt Astalos in the urgent quest in search of the Doctor. Astalos actually has a pretty decent weapon this time around, but it's not necessarily better or worse than your current offerings. It does have very high affinity though. There's a lot of homogenization in charge plates, let's put it that way. Astalos has a strong armor set. The Astalos set is a reasonable choice if you wish to farm it for chain crit. The boots also have razor sharp 3 and thunder attack, which ties well with Astalos' weapon if you choose to build it. Chain crit is on the helm, mail, and braces. Unfortunately, the mail requires a rare mantle, but you can consider farming for it if you wish. You'll likely prefer to have the Almudrin helmet, so a compromise set with the mail and braces will get you to chain crit too. Or you can skip it. Once that's all complete, you can tackle the next set of key quests. Once again, your options are not great. You should simply hunt Berioth and Magnamalo in White Knight Armored Warrior. This is an easy quest to clear off your log and provide some additional Magnamalo materials for later. Next up, Seregios is a reasonable choice. Hunt it now in A Thousand Scales of Dread. 
The Seregio's charge blade is extremely comparable to various other charge blades at this tier, so I would personally skip it for later offerings. You may be enticed by some armor pieces, but mostly just hunt Seregios and move on. After those two key quests are complete, you should hunt Espinus in a slumbering jungle Espinus. Espinus once again has a charge blade to consider. This is very comparable to the Guardian Blade, as well as the Astalos and Seregios charge blades. You can consider forging Espina's Rosenroop right now if you wish. You'll need to forge the Master Rank Rathian charge blade and then upgrade it to Rosenroop using Espina's materials. If you chose Astalos's charge blade, you should skip this. But you can also keep on trucking with the Guardian Blade Plus if you choose. There's nothing armor wise from Espinus, so move on to the next set of key quests. Once again, there's not really a ton of offerings for now, but there are materials for future projects available. You should start with Dark Wings Dark Work to hunt Gormagala. Gormagala's weapon is again extremely equivalent to the previous four offerings right now, so simply hunt it and move on to the next key quest. Now you should hunt Pyrachnikidaki in a mighty need. Once again, this is a reasonable charge blade later, so just bank the materials for now and move on to the next urgent. This urgent is to hunt the flagship monster Malzano in Witness by Moonlight. Malzano has yet another reasonable impact charge blade you can consider. The Duke's Shield builds off the Kimura Warrior Charge Blade. If you wish to build this, you should downgrade your Kimura Warrior Charge Blade Plus, and then upgrade it to the Duke's Shield. This is a solid choice for high raw damage, innate purple sharpness, and a little bit of dragon damage with a level 4 socket. The dragon damage will be reasonable powerful, as the next set of monsters are all Elder Dragons. If you forged a Spinus or Astalos' Charge Blade, I would skip this. But do whatever you want. I'm not your dad. Malzano's armor offerings are fine, but there's nothing worth going out of your way for as a Charge Blade user. Move on to Master Rank 5 Star. Master Rank 5 Star has some offerings to consider. Mainly is Basil Juice. Hunt Basil Juice now in Basil Juice Warning. Basil Juice. The entire Basil Juice set is a consideration for a Charge Blade user especially if you like to have an emphasis on guard. You'll get a mostly complete guard suite with guard and guard up. Then you'll get artillery and load up with razor sharp. The basil juice set also has strong skills with good socket options, so you can consider forging the whole set if you wish. Afterwards, you can consider Rajang because Rajang pants are a strong option. Alternatively, you can consider hunting more Gormagala and a Seregios in Blade Cloaked in Darkness. This is only if you passed over any of the previous charge blades and are still rocking a Guardian Blade Plus. Once the two key quests are completed, you'll get the urgent quest for Dark Citadel White Wheel to hunt Shigaru Magala. You have yet another charge blade option at this tier. Actually, it's two. You can forge Gormagala's Eldscraft Plus at this point, or Shigaru Magala's L'Oppresseur, or The Oppressor if you're not from Quebec. All of these charge blades are fine, and extremely comparable. It's all about whichever monsters you enjoy hunting more than anything. And you could make an argument that the ones with the level 2 Rampage sockets are a little better. After completing Shigaru Magala though, and maybe forging a new weapon, you'll get access to the next tier of quests. These are all Elder Dragons. You'll want to start with Camellios. This is to upgrade your Rosenroop into a Rosenroop Plus if you forged it after a Spinus. Next, Mizutsune's Divine Field Blade is a reasonable choice now that you can upgrade it using Camellio's Hard Claws. You can consider this one too. Once again, there's a lot of Charge Blades here that are extremely similar. So similar that you probably won't even notice a difference when using them. Moving on to Teostra. Teostra has yet another upgrade. This is to Astalos's Amagerex Blade. A reasonable choice here with high affinity and some socket options. If you built Astalos's Blade, go ahead and upgrade it now. I cannot overstate how similar a lot of these charge blades really are. Next, Teostra has some reasonable armor pieces for your consideration, mainly Teostra's Kaiser Crown X and Kaiser Mail X. These have strong critical eye and master's touch offerings. You probably will want to forge these eventually, but sticking it out with your current offerings or the basil juice set for now is very likely fine. With those two key quests complete, you can move on to the final urgent of the main story, Proof of Courage. You'll need to take on Geismagorm, the Archdemon of the Depths. Once you've defeated it, you'll have finished the main story of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, and the credits will roll. But we're not done just yet. You'll be given a new task and a new urgent to slay an afflicted Arzuros. Honestly, this Arzuros may be the hardest monster you've fought so far, as it's mastered the art of move forward quickly, the hardest move to deal with in Monster Hunter. It's still just an Arzuros, and this should be a relatively painless hunt. And you can block as a Charge Blade user. 
This will unlock a new series of quests, the Anomaly Quests. These provide materials to push all of your weapons to a final tier. A lot of these upgrades are barely worth anything, we're talking like 10 raw damage and 2 element, but upgrades are upgrades. New tiers of Anomaly Quests will become available as you improve your Master Rank. Let's briefly talk about Guy's Magorn before we move any further. The Abyssal Splitter has negative affinity but very strong raw and decent dragon damage. It has an impact file and huge purple sharpness. You can consider the Abyssal Splitter, but it's just a different flavor of Charge Blade. Personally, I would pick one of the ones with higher affinity. Armor-wise, there's some juicy pieces to sink your teeth into. First up, the Archfiend Armor Ura, the Waste, has Weakness Exploit 1 and Chain Crit 2 with a level 4 socket. The Waste having Chain Crit 2 also means it's the most expensive piece, requiring a rare Abyssal Dragon's Fire. This will be worthwhile to build, though. The Archfiend Armor Ballo, the chest armor, also has Weakness Exploit and Chain Crit 1 with a level 3 and level 2 socket. You can choose this or the Kaiser Mail, but if you want to maximize Chain Crit, this is a very solid piece to consider. And Master's Touch is easier to get than Chain Crit. The helmet has Weakness Exploit 1, Resentment 2, and a level 4 and level 2 socket. These aren't bad options, but generally it's outclassed by the Kaiser Crown once again. Unless you're desperate for a level 4 socket. The arms and legs have Guy's Magorm's unique skill, Dereliction. Dereliction increases your elemental and status values when using Red Scroll, and when you swap scrolls, you can recover health. I have quite literally and will never use skill switching in Sunbreak, so your mileage is going to vary. You can consider this set or pieces of this set, but generally large monster fights aren't that fun. Giant punching bags. Yuck. If you're into guarding, the Basil Juice set still just ticks most of the boxes. Lucky for you. You'll have to do whatever quest you see fit to reach Master Rank 20 for the next Urgent. You can farm whatever you see fit here. The follow requests are a good option to progress those for new recipes. Alternatively, you can continue to farm the endgame dragons or just wantonly slaughter easy monsters to raise your hunter rank. Once you get to Master Rank 20, you'll have to fight Wind Serpent Ibushi in the urgent quest, Retribution. Wind Serpent Ibushi is underwhelming just like in high rank. I don't even want to talk about it. The next urgent is at Master Rank 30. You may want to see the new tier of Anomaly quests or just continue doing whatever you feel like. At Master Rank 30, you'll get the Urgent for Spine Tingling Divinity Reprise. This is to slay the Master Rank version of All Mother Narwa. All Mother Narwa's Asylum Peel will be your best option for a Thunder Charge Blade when using an Element File. You can consider building it if you're a psychopath who wants to farm this awful fight for a Mantle of Origin. Charge Blade is also the weapon that benefits the most out of Storm Soul offered from the Ibushi and Narwa mixed set. That being said, the Narwa and Ibushi sets are trash, for various reasons, and you can make a better mixed set using pieces of armor you've already acquired. You can make a better set at like Master Rank 3 star. This is with the added benefit of not having to waste your time with these monsters. I'm counting it as an absolute win. Now you'll get a new tier of Anomaly Quest to take a gander at, otherwise just get yourself to Master Rank 50. At Master Rank 50, you'll get the Urgent for Pierce the Heavens. This is for Furious Rajang, a slightly more aggressive Rajang with a slightly altered moveset. Riveting. Furious Rajang's weapon is a decent choice if you like the look of it. Personally, I would consider it for its strong purple sharpness and good socket options. It is missing a level 2 Rampage decoration slot, which is a little bit important for endgame damage, however. Furious Rajang is a few armor pieces to consider, mostly if you're into the Elemental Charge Blades. These pieces are the Divine Iyer Obi and Divine Iyer Howry. These are more adjustments to the previous sets, and personally I think the Archdemon offerings are a little more appealing overall. Finally, a few pieces of Furious Rajang's unique skill, aptly named Furious. You build Rage in a Red Scroll, then you swap to Blue for a temporarily unlimited stamina and some status bonuses. Personally, I don't skill swap, and unlimited stamina isn't overly useful for Charge Blade. Your next Urgent is at Master Rank 70. Starting to feel like torture clearing quests we've beaten a dozen times now. You'll get the Urgent for Crimson Glow Valstrax, our friendly neighborhood rocket dragon. The armor is exactly like high rank. It's fine, but personally I don't think it's worth building, and it's definitely only worth using if you're using a raw or dragon weapon. I prefer general purpose sets, and I don't necessarily like using equipment with specific activation criteria. Your mileage will vary. The Crimson Glow Valstrax Charge Blade is a solid choice for a dragon element charge blade. You can consider building it if you wish to use an elemental file. This has strong raw and dragon attack and very solid white sharpness with reasonable sockets. Now just keep going until you hit Master Rank 100 and it will take you a very long time. At Master Rank 100, you can finally fight Scorned Magnamallow. Scorned Magnamallow's charge blade is a strong general purpose charge blade. 
It has decent raw, purple sharpness, and blast element, which is just good on everything. Next, you have strong socket options and an impact file. This is a solid choice, and rightfully so, since it's the last monster in the game. The armor's fine. It has more skill swapping nonsense and activation criteria skills. I'm not overly interested, and by the time you've made it to Scorn Magnamalo, well, you should know what you want and what's good. For final elemental charge blades, your options primarily are Thunder, which is Narwa, we've already talked about this. Otherwise, the generic Thunder Trees Tristan and I Sold Plus is a reasonable choice. But it does have lower sharpness. This has the second highest Thunder and good sockets with an 8 20% affinity, however. For fire, you'll want to forge Rachnikadaki's Crawling Crusher. This offers the highest fire element with large white sharpness and innate 30% affinity. You'll also get a strong socket option of 2-1-1. The raw is on the low end, but when focusing on elemental file, you care about the elemental damage quite a bit. And 30% affinity is very strong. Ice is a pretty obvious Flicker Blizzard Whale from Aurora Somnicanth. This has by far the largest ice damage. You take a huge hit going for Baryoth's offering, unfortunately. For Dragon, it's Crimson Glow Valstrax's Crimson Mechwing. This just ticks all the boxes and will be your best choice. Unfortunately, it is very late in the game, and Dragon Element is rarely your best choice. But, if you want a Dragon Charge Blade, <laughs> this is the one. For Water, there really isn't a great option, unfortunately. You may just have to forgo a true Water type and instead use the Mizutsune Impact Charge Blade instead. Your only other option will be the Vayak and Juratotus Trees. Vayak very likely is your strongest bet. The Juradotus tree is just not overly appealing. If you want more details, check the spreadsheet. That's equipment progression for Charge Blade. At this point, you should be well equipped to handle whatever extra content appears after Master Rank 100 and in future content updates. You should know what good gear looks like moving forwards. Thanks for watching. If you had a good time, you can subscribe for more extremely detailed guides like this one. Likes and comments always help as well. If you want to directly support the channel, you can use Super Chat during live streams or use Super Thanks on this or any one of my videos. I'm not picky. Becoming a channel member is also a great option. Hey, you could even subscribe to YouTube Premium. This gives you ad-free viewing on all of YouTube and every channel you watch gets a little slice of that pie. The Patreon is back live. You can support the channel at patreon.com slash recommended playing. See you next time for... I don't know, not Switch Axe Equipment Progression.